Hello and welcome to Black Culture Insight. Today we're diving into the story of Mansa Musa, the richest man in history. As you read the video title, I'm sure you're curious about how this person's wealth compares to that of the wealthiest individual you know. Well, as of the making of this video, Bernard Arnault holds the title of the world's wealthiest person, with an estimated net worth of $235.9 billion, according to Forbes. However, he's not the richest person in history. People often attribute that title to Mansa Musa, a 14th century West African ruler whose immense wealth and generous giveaways were so extravagant that they reportedly disrupted an entire country's economy. Historians believe he holds the title of the wealthiest person ever to have lived, with his wealth estimated at around $900 billion today. So, who is Mansa Musa? Mansa Musa was born into a family of rulers around 1280 AD in the Mali Empire in West Africa. Musa's father was Fagalea, and legends say he played a crucial role in founding the Mali Empire. Fagalea never took the throne himself. Still, his bloodline would go on to produce seven Mansas who would oversee much of the evolution of the Mali Empire during the 13th and 15th centuries. Musa's brother, Mansa Abu Bakr, ruled the empire until 1312, when he relinquished power to go on an expedition. He reportedly embarked on an expedition with a fleet of 2,000 ships and thousands of men, women, and enslaved people, but he sailed off and never returned. Some people entertain the idea that they reached South America, but there is no evidence of this. In any case, Mansa Musa inherited the kingdom his brother left behind. The rise of Mansa Musa and the Mali Empire. Musa's rule came when European nations struggled due to raging civil wars and a lack of resources. The Mali Empire flourished during that period thanks to ample natural resources like gold and salt. Under his rule, the kingdom of Mali grew significantly he annexed 24 cities, including Timbuktu. The kingdom stretched for about 2,000 miles, from the Atlantic Ocean to modern-day Niger, taking in parts of what are now Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea, and Ivory Coast. During the reign of Mansa Musa, the empire of Mali accounted for almost half of the old world's gold, according to the British Museum, and all of it belonged to the king. In the early years of his reign from 1312 to 1318, Musa's fair and just rule earned him the loyalty of his subjects, who greatly valued these qualities in their mansa. As with his predecessors, Musa was an empire builder who sought to increase his empire's wealth and territorial limits. His kingdom thrived primarily due to its control over Saharan trade routes, extending from Cairo to Mali and beyond. By ensuring peaceful travel for traders, he built the Malian Empire into a significant regional power in the early 14th century. Port towns facilitated trade negotiations, with some suggesting that salt was as valuable as gold, reflecting Mali's abundant gold supply. These towns also played a crucial role in collecting taxes for Musa's empire. Additionally, trade along rivers like the Niger, Gambia, and Senegal further bolstered his wealth. Musa recognized the importance of horses in warfare and built a formidable cavalry force of around 10,000 riders within his imperial army, totaling approximately 100,000 men. Making his army one of the largest in the world at the time, behind only a few others like China and the Mongol successor states. Musa ensured a steady supply of high-quality assets, such as Arabian horses and metals for weapons, by prioritizing his royal traders in the empire's trade network. The Mali cavalry, equipped with copper headpieces, chainmail, and cushion tunics, formed tight formations on reliable horses, establishing them as an elite and powerful unit. From 1314 to 1324, Musa conducted raids, capturing territory and people, boasting of conquering 24 cities and surrounding areas. These campaigns required war material, leading to the utilization of charcoal for smelting and blacksmithing. Deforestation facilitated production and improved cavalry movement. Blacksmiths held high social status, and villages without one sought artisans from elsewhere. Skilled artisans became valued during Musa's reign, Military tactics evolved with specialized units like the Farimba, equipped with various weapons and supported by river clans for swift troop movement across the empire. Musa's Grand Voyage to Mecca In 1324, about 12 years into his rule, 
Musa embarked on a 9000-mile journey to Mecca, just as the first Mansa Sundiata had done, famously known as the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. The journey is mandatory for Muslims who are financially and physically capable. Musa opted to travel by land rather than the sea to demonstrate power and prosperity to the outside world. His pilgrimage would lead him through the expansive desert, along the Red Sea coast, and down the Arabian Peninsula to Mecca. Some accounts suggest that he constructed a mosque each Friday during his journey, resulting in an estimated 2,000 mosques over his lifetime. Musa assembled a 60-0-0-0 strong group, comprising 12,000 personal servants, 8,000 soldiers, family members and guests, including governors and commoners from across the empire. Unlike typical pilgrims who traveled on foot, he rode a black stallion adorned with gold, wearing extravagant wide-legged trousers made from an exclusive material reserved for him, symbolizing his elite social standing. The pilgrimage was a massive logistical undertaking involving hundreds of camels and horses loaded with essential supplies like food, water, tents, tools, and clothes. Around 80 camels each carried 80 pounds of gold, intended for gifts or trade to replenish supplies during the journey. The caravan faced its first significant challenge as temperatures fluctuated between extreme highs of 58 C during the day and freezing at night. In the arid, rocky landscape, each person needed a gallon of water daily, while camels consumed 25 gallons in minutes, storing it for weeks. Servants worked tirelessly to replenish water supplies at scarce sources. Cooks prepared meals and entertainment, funded by Musa to maintain morale. Guided by stars and wind-marked sand, the caravan traversed Niani, Walata, Tagaza, Tassili, Najer, and Gadanes, en route to their first major stop, the Egyptian city of Cairo. Musa's ordeal in Cairo. In July 1324, Musa made quite the impression as he entered Cairo's western gate, leaving the city in awe. His entourage, adorned in gold, drew the attention of the bustling streets. One Egyptian official even compared the scene to the brilliance of the sun. The current Egyptian ruler, Sultan Mamluk, extended a gracious invitation to Musa for a grand celebration, but the situation initially posed some discomfort. Tradition dictated that Musa should show homage to the Sultan by kissing his hand or the ground at his feet. However, he declined this act, asserting his status as a pilgrim who solely pays homage to Allah. He was also mindful that his Mali empire surpassed the sultans in wealth and size. Eventually, Musa compromised by kissing the ground and expressing gratitude to Allah before the sultan, leaving both parties content. Subsequently, the two leaders engaged in conversation, enjoyed feasts, exchanged gifts, and experienced the warm hospitality of Cairo, generously provided to the entire caravan. They rested in the Karafa district where Musa formed a bond with Governor Ibn Amir Hajib. The caravan remained there for approximately three months, allowing the sweltering summer heat to subside. During his time there, Musa's character made a strong impression on the locals, and they learned about his reputable leadership over the prosperous Mali Empire, which he had governed for over a decade. The Mansa's lavish generosity amazed the Egyptians as he distributed gold gifts throughout the city he visited or resided in. Though well-intentioned, Musa's gold gifts depreciated the metal's value in Egypt, and the economy took a significant hit. Musa purportedly attempted to counteract the inflation by repurchasing surplus gold, stabilizing the market, and highlighting the immense wealth of the empire. It took 12 years for the community to recover. Musa departed Cairo on October 18, 1324, and the caravan commenced its journey, traversing approximately 1,000 miles through the desert between the River Nile and the Red Sea, and towards the Gulf of Suez in the east. After several days, they arrived at the Gulf of Suez, marking their entry into Asia. Upon reaching the northern shores of the Gulf of Aqaba, the caravan encountered a convergence of trade routes, where people from Asia, Europe, and Africa mingled. Following the footsteps of many foreign pilgrims, Musa planned his next significant leg of the journey, intending to stop at Medina, the esteemed holy city associated with the Prophet Muhammad. Upon arrival, Musa paid homage at the Prophet's mosque, where Muhammad lay entombed and engaged in discussions with foreign Muslim scholars.
Driven by a sincere desire to deepen his understanding and broaden his knowledge, Musa's entry to Mecca. After a 240-mile journey, the caravan reached Mecca, where Musa was among the first to spot the city from the rugged hills. He observed the Great Mosque and the sacred black stone Kaaba, the religious center established by Muhammad. The 12-day Hajj began upon their arrival. Musa followed the custom of wearing a simple white garment and removing all jewelry, temporarily relinquishing his status as ruler to unite with fellow believers. Prayers, celebrations, and rituals filled the days, culminating in Musa joining other pilgrims on the Mount of Mercy on the ninth day. The Mansa continued to distribute gifts to numerous residents of Mecca. After three days of feasting, the pilgrimage concluded, and Musa, now a Haji, a title bestowed upon those who completed the pilgrimage, marked it as the pinnacle of earthly accomplishment. Musa considered staying in Mecca permanently, but reports from Mali discouraged him. His son Magan ruled as Mansa, but his youth and inexperience led to challenges, including conflict with the neighboring Songhai people who sought to expand their empire at Mali's expense. Musa's return to Mali. Preparations for Musa's return journey to Mali began with him inviting scholars and descendants of the Prophet to join him. Abu Ishaq Asheli, a poet and architect, accepted the offer. As they traveled, Musa discussed his plans for Mali and his desire to eventually live in Mecca. The journey was difficult, with reports of pilgrims dying from cold, starvation, and bandit raids. By the time they reached Cairo, news of their first visit had spread far worldwide, with European and Asian traders and explorers waiting to see Musa's wealth firsthand. Musa faced challenges resupplying in Cairo and had to borrow money at high interest rates due to depleted gold reserves. However, the caravan continued its journey across the desert. In 1325, a messenger rode to Musa and informed him that General Sagmanja had captured Gao from the Songhai, marking a significant territorial gain for Mali. Although Musa wasn't directly involved, it showcased Mali's strength upon departing for the Hajj pilgrimage. Musa decided to divert his return route to personally receive the submission of the King of Songhai and Gao. Musa diplomatically negotiated the absorption of Gao into the Mali Empire, enslaving many inhabitants while sparing some and taking hostages. He commissioned the construction of grand mosques in Gao and Timbuktu, introducing a new architectural style. The development of educational institutions, including the University of Sankore, transformed Timbuktu into a center of Islamic learning and trade. The Jingwereber Mosque, built with organic materials, remains a UNESCO World Heritage Site, showcasing Mali's architectural ingenuity. With its ancient heritage and strategic trade routes, Timbuktu became the foremost city of the Mali Empire under Musa's rule. Musa and a select group traveled back to Niani comfortably on purpose-built barges. Upon arrival, the capital welcomed him with celebration, and Musa began development projects, including constructing the Hall of Audience. Despite his desire to retire to Mecca, concerns about his successor's leadership prompted him to stay and stabilize the empire. With the help of regional leaders and diplomats, Musa managed conflicts, such as repelling the Kingdom of Masi's invasion of Timbuktu in 1330. In Mali, Musa delved deeply into science, arts, history, and Islamic studies, all of which he had encountered during his pilgrimage. Musa commissioned numerous mosques, serving as education hubs and fostering a more literate and enlightened population. Rather than sending students to Morocco, they now remained within the empire. Many credit him for initiating the education tradition in West Africa. The Sahara no longer isolated the empire from the world. Instead, the pilgrimage forged strong connections with Egypt, and the influx of foreign embassies and traders facilitated a continuous exchange of ideas. Musa's efforts placed Mali prominently on the world stage during its golden age. Musa's final days historical records indicate that around 1337, at approximately 57 years old, Mansa Musa passed away under mysterious circumstances. Just before his death, he dispatched an envoy to his Moroccan counterpart, Abu al-Hassan Ali, to extend congratulations on the conquest of Tlemcen in Algeria in May of the same year. Some accounts propose that Musa received Abu al-Hassan's reply posthumously. In contrast, alternative sources suggest that his demise occurred five years earlier, 
in 1332, and that Musa's successor, Magan, sent the envoy bearing congratulations. Some propose that Musa left behind four wives and numerous offspring, adhering to the tradition of supporting multiple wives. However, documented evidence only confirms the existence of his spouse, Inari, and his designated heir, Magan. Departing from tradition, Musa opted for his son rather than his brother Suleiman to succeed him, prompting inquiries into the political landscape of the era. Maghan's role as heir during Musa's pilgrimage indicates that many people anticipated this succession. However, many argued that several regional leaders disapproved of the new Mansa. Magan's reign lasted briefly for about four years and it saw significant challenges notably the assertion of independence by the Songhai in 1340 and raids by Masi horsemen, diminishing the security once enjoyed. Upon Suleiman's succession in 1341, diplomatic relations continued, but internal divisions emerged, highlighted by accusations against Suleiman's wife and subsequent civil unrest. Suleiman died in around 1359 with his named Kasa, succeeding to the throne but only reigning for nine months before Jata, Magan's son, seized power after a rebellion, marking the beginning of Mali's decline. The decline of the Mali Empire. More Mansas followed after Jata's reign. However, the Mali Empire quickly shrank in territory, influence, and power. Emerging empires in the region such as Diara, Great Fulo, and Songhai are taking lands. They attempted counter-attacks to retake the lost lands, but failed. The heart of the empire continued to suffer attacks, and 1670 the capital city lost to the attacking nation. Some suggest that the sheer power and size of the empire of Mali at its peak had created complacency, with no significant military setbacks for generations. Musa's pilgrimage had inadvertently advertised the riches of the state to outsiders and turned it into the prey of neighboring kings. The empire fragmented into chiefdoms, and the once glorious golden age faded into a distant memory. Conclusion Mansa Musa's vast wealth, estimated at $900 billion today, sets him apart as one of the wealthiest individuals in history, surpassing modern-day billionaires like Rockefeller, Musk, and Bezos. However, scholars question these estimates due to their dependence on assumptions about gold supplies and historically unreliable sources. Musa's wealth and the timeline of many pivotal life events remain mysterious. However, his pilgrimage to Mecca significantly elevated the Mali Empire's global visibility. In 1375, the renowned Catalan Atlas featured a portrayal of Mansa Musa, holding a golden object, accompanied by a caption declaring him the wealthiest and most esteemed ruler of his time due to the empire's vast gold reserves. While his empire's wealth undoubtedly played a pivotal role in his reign, his success as a ruler extended beyond mere economic prowess. His effective leadership during the empire's zenith indicates a strategic ruler capable of fostering loyalty through calculated decisions. And that is the story of Mansa Musa. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one.